Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that little montage of my electric longboard. This second half of the video is the more technical aspect of the board, where I'll be explaining every little part, how it all works, and the mistakes I made along the way to get to the point I am at currently. The three basic components you need for an electric skateboard are the batteries, a speed controller, and a motor. There's different battery capacities, cell counts, and battery types you can choose from, but I decided to go for two 3S 8000mAh LiPo packs. 
My speed controller is rated at 6S maximum, so the plan was to wire these two packs in series. This doubles the cell count, but keeps the capacity at the same level. This means that my battery pack is a 6S 8000 milliamp battery pack. The speed controller I went with is the 120 amp X car B series ESC. It runs both censored and censorless mode, which is something I'll explain later in the video. The speed controller is the only part of the board I haven't yet had to replace, although the cooling fan is currently broken, but that's an easy fix. Lastly, for the electronics, we have the motor. At first, I bought a 42mm motor, which definitely was not powerful enough. It gave me about 5 minutes of ride time before burning up. I quickly ordered a different motor, realizing I definitely needed something bigger for this project to work. I ordered the 50mm 270kV 2200W motor from Alien Power System. It's also a censored motor, which allows me to ride in censored mode. In sensorless mode, the ESC pretty much has to guess what position the motor is in, but in censored mode, the ESC knows what position the motor is in. This means that you have more torque and the ride overall is smoother. It mainly helps in the lower rounds per minute, like when the motor isn't turning. Before, when I was running sensorless mode, it was impossible to start without any forward movement, but now in censored mode, this is possible. I however always start with a push start, as it makes life much easier for the motor and also extends the overall range since starting from a standstill takes a lot of energy. Trying to switch to censored mode came with some problems though. After I contacted the motor manufacturer, I found out that I had to switch to sensor wires for this to work, and then I also had to find the right motor wire combination, but once you find this combination you don't really have to change it ever again, as long as you remember which motor wire goes where. Of course you need a box to house all the electronics in, I knew that this plastic box wasn't very good and definitely wasn't a permanent solution, but to begin with it did the job of holding everything underneath the board. I quickly switched to a second version of the same box, but this time I took more care with cutting out the plastic bits resulting in a cleaner look. I was also able to reduce the height of the box by a couple centimeters which gave me more clearance under the board. Later on I got a friend to build me the box I currently use. It's made out of thick wood with two aluminium plates at the bottom and the top. It's so strong, in fact, that when my board was run over by a car at some point, it was able to take the heavy load and protect everything inside from sustaining any damage, apart from a couple of scratches. Once you have all the electronics, you're going to need a drivetrain. This is where the power from the motor is transferred into the wheels so that you can actually get moving. I bought this motor mount from Inertion along with the trucks from the same company. All you have to do is bolt the motor onto the motor mount and then bolt the mount over the trucks. This will ensure that the motor moves with the trucks as you turn. After that, you need two pulleys, which also come with the motor mount, a small one that goes onto the motor shaft, and a bigger one that goes onto the wheel. You can play around with the different gearing ratios, which refers to the amount of teeth on the pulleys, um, but I went with 15 teeth on the motor and 36 on the wheel. You can also choose between a belt width of 9 or 12 millimeters, but I decided to go for 12 millimeters. Initially, I had this deck and wheels, but like I mentioned before, my board got into a bit of an accident where my friend was riding it and sadly he didn't make a corner, which resulted in the board rolling onto the street. I got this deck instead and slightly larger and softer wheels. These are 90 millimeter wheels, which give me a higher top speed than before and also make the ride a bit smoother. You'll also need a controller. Controllers usually come with a receiver, which plugs into the speed controller. At first I had this controller, which was bulky and wasn't rechargeable, and it ran out of charge in about 5 hours. I later swapped to this controller, also from Alien Power System. It's very small and light and is rechargeable. The battery life lasts literally weeks, and I don't really even have to think about recharging it. The downside to this controller though is the throttle, because it's very, very sensitive. This makes it very difficult for first-time riders to learn to ride this board, um, and this problem can be avoided by upgrading to an ESC which allows for programmable throttle curves. Mine does not have this capability, and therefore I had to become very precise with the throttle. It definitely takes a couple of weeks to get fully comfortable with the throttle, but other than that, this is the remote I recommend. Charging is a little bit iffy with my board. I could have gone with a BMS, but at the time of building this board, I didn't know much about them, so I decided to go for this IMAX B6 LiPo charger. To charge, I connect the main power lead and the battery's balance lead to the charger, and when I'm not charging, I store the balance lead in this little box to somewhat waterproof it. This change was made after I broke the first pair of batteries when riding through this rain. To power the board on, I plug the main power lead into the rest of the system and then flip the on-off switch on the ESC. The remote and the receiver bind as soon as they're both turned on. The latest addition I've made to my board is this battery screen. It's wired directly into the leads coming from the batteries and shows me the percentage left. Before I'd have to plug a voltage checker into the balance leads which was just a hassle, now all I have to do is flip a switch. This screen is very cheap and I definitely recommend that you pick one up if you're going to be building your own board. 
As you saw from the slow motions earlier, this board has quite a bit of power, especially now that it's in censored mode. I've yet to run into a scenario where it isn't able to move me forward. Even steep hills aren't a problem, although I cannot accurately give information on just how steep it can climb. The top speed of this board is around 40 km per hour. The maximum range at full throttle is around 7 km. But at my usual cruising speed, which is slightly faster than biking speed, I can reach around 20 km. At even lower speeds, I could probably push it to about 25 km. The board handles a lot of different terrain as well. Uh, it's able to ride gravel and flattish grass, although this is obviously not the intended terrain for this board. The roughest terrain I come across in the city I ride in are tram tracks. I'm sure my board isn't too happy when I ride these, but even when I had the smaller wheels, I was still able to cross them. And with these bigger wheels, I'm able to cross them even easier. There's also a variety of stones and paths that I ride on, um, but as you can see from this footage, it handles them pretty easily as well. And that's about everything, guys. The links to all the products I've been talking about are in the description down below, and I'll be answering any questions you guys have in the comments. I've set up an Instagram account where I've been posting updates and additions on the board, so if you're interested in the latest changes, you can check that out over there.